then, we are back with more understandings from the Renewed Covenant, from the Aramaic English translation of the Word. This translation comes then the uh, first documents properly translated from the Hebraic language into our language, so then we can understand the future of our age, our planet, and the future regarding then divine guidance and the time that the prophecies are indicating. As we understand, there is a relation with the prophecy and time giving us what we should expect from the future. And as we understand, per prophecy, the time is extremely short. Many of the most important events of the end should take place from this date up to 6030s. So the time is extremely short and then many events are coming. And as we understand, we must be honest in speaking with people and making them understand the importance of understanding the Creator's calendar. Why do we have 2012 instead of 6012? What made the change? From the time of the Creator, He had not decided to change the calendar. Because he came in person and his holy calendar remained as it was. As he's created then the heavens and the earth and the sun and the lunar view for a specific reason. For the counting of time. And then what is the link then from time in the earth and prophecies? How do you make those relations? A lot of people they don't understand how to make a relation with the prophecy and time. Because they don't understand the layers required to make those links. How do they make the links then? What kind of a scripture are they using to understand the links? Because no person in this earth is above the holy laws given in this context. The laws received from on high on the mountain not even Yahweh the Creator can be against his own laws and if you think the laws were abolished how do you explain then the shadow understandings of the law in the Torah came up a report and around 35 percent of the people they don't believe in any kind of a deity That's a big chunk. Because they came to realize that it doesn't exist. It's a fraud. What they understand so far in terms of divinity is absolutely a fraud. And they are right. Absolutely right. In terms of they are positively certain of this fact. But there is a deity that came from the Torah, from the Hebrews. The problem is, there is a gap from the time that the Savior came. The time should never restart it. That was an invention. It should have continued because the Savior, as we understand, because of the astronomical references of the time, lunar views, and then the great star, those were recorded. So the computer, then, by calculating backwards, in terms of the lunar view and then the records, the secular records of the time, astronomical records, then we understand the Savior was born in 3999 per the Creator's calendar. He was born on the first day of the Feast of the Tabernacles. Thus, He tabernacled with us. The word inhabit was invented, it was a bad translation. He came as tabernacling with us because it was the Feast of Tabernacles. Indicating he would be then responsible and in charge of the second services of the Holy Tabernacles. Then it started making more sense, doesn't it? 
then you can gladly link then the tabernacle himself being in the tabernacle from the time of Moses. Then you understand first service and second service. We are living during the time of the second service. That's why we have Hebrews in the uh, word, but nobody explain it. That's why we have Hebrews, because the Hebrews are the updates for the Levitical priests to do their work during the second services of the Holy Tabernacles. Then you don't have to compare yourself anymore. You don't have to have a list of behavioral procedures, because those are taken care of. Those are dealt with in the holy camps. Then you begin to understand. Tabernacles understand the CTs, then you understand then what Shaul the Shaliak was explaining, or Paul the Apostle. Then you understand the meaning of those words. Then you become more acquainted in being part of then the family of Yahweh. Because these 35% of our population do not believe in any kind of a deity, those are the most prone of truly understanding. So there is no comparison. They don't have to be obligated of reading the word. They understand 99.5% of the entire scripture, those are for the Hebraic people when they are exercising the second services of the Holy Tabernacles. Then they understand the Messiah was in fact Yahweh himself, the very creator that came in person. And he said, go therefore around the world and form holy tabernacles, as per the design of Moses. And teach the people what you have learned. And then, as Ruach HaKodesh would come a few days later, then they would function. And they would help the Gentiles outside of the camps. Thus the cities or tabernacles. Then it's fun, isn't it? When a person begins to learn properly and they are part of the whole story and they begin to understand very easily. Isn't that refreshing understanding it? Because you are not obligated to do anything. You hear and you are refreshed. And then you have joy to explore the word. Whereas before it was a drudgery. Because you were always compared with it. And the scriptures were not meant for you to be compared with. So it makes it fun when you begin to understand what it means. The entire renewed covenant gives you then a couple of understandings. The completion of the spring feast and the autumn feast. So when is then the Creator coming back? In autumn. But you were told there any time. No, it's not any time. He's coming in autumn. That's why you have the autumn feast. The sound of the shofar is done in autumn. So then what is the situation regarding then the time and prophecy? Where do you find it? So you are included in the prophecies yet being realistic enough to live in this time. You find in Leviticus. Yeah, but we were then set at liberty from the laws. That's why the world doesn't understand prophecy. And rather than becoming a people understanding the prophecies as fun, so they can be part of the family, then they are told lies. Simple lies. Simply lies. They are taught that there is a Savior that doesn't exist. They are taught, oh, you have to behave to go to heaven. There is no heaven to go to. 
When you die, either you go to torment without the Mishia, or then your soul is going to rest. There is no going up and reigning with a thousand years, and then another thousand, and Satan would reign, and how do you make a distinction of a thousand, you're the thousand? It's confusion. Precisely what then Daniel said, going to and fro. These 35% of the people, they have the greatest chance of understanding the truth. So they get refreshed with it. And having fun with it. They begin to search the holy writings. They begin to understand the whole plan. They begin to synchronize themselves with the Creator's calendar. That's precisely what He wants. Fun, huh? Studying the Word, as per then the Creator's understanding, is very fun. The more you search, the more you have a desire to search. Avast, virus. So then, understanding the prophetic and then the time, the shadow prophetic of the events to come is spoken of by Shaul the Shaliak in Hebrews 10 places you time prophecy. Then you begin to relate heaven with earthly time. From there you then begin to walk through a very vast understanding of layers that you were never exposed before. Please stay tuned. Watch more